freestyle. Yeah, yeah, freestyle. Dude, you're awesome. <laughs> I need you all the time. <laughs> you're the best. Ready to go? Ready. Oh, I should probably click record then. You should, because that would have been a disaster. Mm. How, are you feeling nervous? No, this is good. Not nervous yet. <laughs> yeah, not yet. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome to the Raw Barbell Club podcast. I'm your host, coach, and all around good guy, Andy. Today I'm here with Carl Paoli and Lydia Barrington. Uh, where are we today? We are at a hotel, Radisson Blue, <laughs> downtown CBD, Sydney CBD, not downtown, CBD. And that's the thing that you smoke, the, just the downtown area. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, Australia is still not allowed to do that, so no, no, no. keep that on the DL. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not me, not me. I may look like it, but uh, no. I keep it clean. That's good, that's good. Um, so for the first time in a long time, I'm actually in the city. I usually don't come out here because uh, it is far away from sunny old Windsor. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I had to make the trip to meet you and now you, Lydia. Oh, thanks, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. The yeah, all-around good. good guy. Yeah. Oh, it's just the that's way you introduce it. I like that. That's amazing. <laughs> um, so for people that uh, don't know, Carl, you're a movement guy? I think people would consider that I'm a movement guy, for uh, sure. Whatever lifestyle that means. design guy. Lifestyle design guy. You've been, yeah. you've been studying up. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I like to just, uh, before we like really get into the weeds, yeah. uh, show the guest that I studied a little bit. Okay. And then uh, we go from there. So that's why Lydia is like throwing a wrench in it because I'm like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> who's Lydia? Throwing <laughs> <Yeah>. me <laughs> in there as a wrench in it. Yeah. But Lydia, um, maybe you can give us a little, uh, like, a little introduction to you, how you found Cal. How mm -hmm. you got into movement and stuff? Yeah, cool. Uh, so I attended the Freestyle Seminar in 2017 when Carl and Daniel came to Wellington, New Zealand. And then after I attended that, I was like, holy shit. Oh, wait, are we allowed to swear? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we just talked about it. We have to like that. Okay. All right. Yeah, so holy shit. <laughs> Can we swear? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so. After I attended that, I was like, holy shit, what am I doing with my life? Like, it was way more than what I expected. Um, and I completely just changed my perspective on everything. It made me question why I was training, uh, what I was doing for a job. And then, long story short, I was like, oh my god, I need to work for Freestyle. So I reached out to Carl and was like, I'm willing to do whatever it takes uh, to be a part of this awesome team. And then, so I started doing the Freestyle Daily Programming. So it's like, um, it's a training program that looks across a lot of diff like different disciplines of training and essentially builds up a set of skills that you can apply to anything that you want to do. Uh, so I was like, I've got to get in on it. And yeah, so long story short, I'm here now as team captain for our Freestyle Training Program. Awesome. Yeah. So will you be there on Saturday as well? Ooh. Yeah, oh she's, yeah. She's, she's going to be auditing the whole seminar. Awesome. I'll I'll be there. You haven't been out to Simon's gym, have you? I've not. Oh. It, it's pretty epic, right? You guys are gonna love it. <laughs> it's like right up your alley. That's Ooh, cool. It's, a, it, it's it's sort of like a functional training gym. Uh -huh. um, but he's got like a warped wall. He's got like Sick. just this monkey bar. These monkey bars that go basically halfway down the gym. That is awesome. So yeah, yeah I've seen pictures. It's pretty epic. Yeah. You're gonna love it. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of fun to be had there. And he's got all all like uh just like some crazy machines. So he's got all like you know, he's got reverse hypers, uh like belt squats, all of that too. I know you struggle with leg strength, so Yeah, I, I, I struggle not only with leg strength, <laughs> but even wa even walking into a gym. I, oh. it's my nightmare. Yeah, yeah. I, I had to piggyback him last time. <laughs> you, 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 she did. She did. I couldn't. I couldn't carry myself. My little sticks couldn't handle. Um, tell me a bit about your background. So you started off in gymnastics. You did that for many years, right? Yeah, gymnastics was the background. And then uh, when I retired from gymnastics, I was studying environmental science. I focused on uh, genetic engineering for a while, and then went into marine biology, which landed me in the U.S. or back in the U.S. where I was born. And there, as a part-time gig, I was coaching gymnastics to young boys. And then I realized, oh, I, I know something here. And the coolest part was that the parents wanted to participate in their kids' program. 
and adult programs in the US when it comes to gymnastics didn't really exist. It wasn't something that was formalized, but the gym where I was uh, working at called Acro Sports had that offering. So I went all in on that and that led to personal training, fitness, eventually I uh, went to a traditional health club and became a personal trainer there. Realized that to be able to grow, you need to learn how to sell. So I, I really dove uh, deep down into the business side of things and then I realized, okay, I can actually do this on my own. And that's when I started my own practice. And this was in 2005, 2006. And then eventually CrossFit came around and it just happened to be the right methodology with uh, a ripe audience eager to understand more about gymnastics and uh, specifically within the CrossFit space, what was missing was that they were teaching gymnastics as if it was artistic gymnastics. And what I came in uh, saying was that this is not about artistic gymnastics. It's about understanding the principles of calisthenics, for example, or simple body mechanics that are transferable into everything else that you do, whether it's uh, within the gym, in sport, or in life. And here are some super simple tools. And I started creating content, and that's what kind of uh, got the name out there and the word out there. And that landed me a book deal, and in 2014, wrote that book. And yeah, the rest is kind of history. And here I am now uh, <laughs> talking to you. <laughs> so. Um First off, it's a shame that you did all of this really cool stuff and now you're stuck talking to me. Um, <laughs> is, it, is it a shame though? <laughs> and no, it's not. Yeah. I'm just making no. a joke. Yeah, um, I don't think so. This is awesome. I, I absolutely love meeting both of you guys. Um, uh, first thing is, it's really cool that you study marine biology. My day job is I actually set up and maintain aquariums around Sydney. Oh, no way. Yeah. shit. Yeah. So, that's incredible. Yeah, that's what I do for a living. and. When I was growing up, I really wanted to study marine biology, but I didn't because uh, there's not as much work in it doing what I liked, which was actually looking after things. Mm. So I just invented a job to do Well, that. the Barrier Reef is not too far away, and it needs no. a lot of looking after. It does. At many levels. So 100%. Uh, maybe there's something there. Maybe. This is what, the, uh, can, I, can we do a quick aside? Yeah. So one of, the, yeah, one of the big things that I wanted to do when I got into fitness was I wanted to try to train people to go on expeditions so we could uh, help uh, initiatives that were maybe working on protecting uh, like the Barrier Reef or uh, doing research in terms of coral reef ecology. And those were the things that I wanted to do because when I was uh, studying in Singapore at the National U University of Singapore, we went on an expedition to Malaysia and I re realized how physical it was and how a lot of the scientists couldn't keep up and I realized we need to have a training program within our marine biology department and that didn't exist so when I got into fitness and training that was always one of the outcomes that I wanted to see and I even started a branch within my company uh, that was called Naka Green which was my old company back then yeah. and it was all about trying to train people to go on these expeditions and partnering with uh, any organization that was out uh, working and uh, trying to develop some conservation. Wow, that's yeah. so cool. And, and that's still part of the, the bigger picture. I just haven't gotten there yet. It's coming. <laughs> that's awesome. So man. maybe you want to join us. Maybe. Yeah? Yeah, that would be really cool. Andy, we got a spot for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can carry me. <laughs> My little legs can carry me. <laughs> so uh, on the way here, on the train, I was listening to your Brute podcast. Oh, and, nice. Um, uh, Mike. Mike, that's mm -hmm. it. So that's what is going through my head because that was part of the podcast, what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, he has an impossible last name to, uh, to pronounce. A ca cashew? No? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Sorry, Mike. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, he definitely doesn't yeah. listen to this. Okay, he, he will. <laughs> um, the, the next thing I want to talk about. So you, you came from uh, gymnastics. What sort of you know ended your professional gymnastics career because you were on the um, like you were a really good gymnast and you did that for like 15 years right? Mm -hmm. yeah that's a great question I think there there were multiple factors that ended my career one I had a lot of injuries so a lot of nagging injuries pain 
two, I probably didn't have the discipline required to go to the next level, or at least not enough interest in gymnastics to make it my lifestyle. Three, I probably didn't have the tools and counseling that I needed and support that I needed to be able to break through mentally. I had psychologists, psychologists that I work with and I had great coaches, but I didn't get the tools that I needed to, to get there. And then I was eager to explore the world. I, I was tired of uh, living in this gym and just feeling locked in where uh, you, you don't get to really see the outside. And I also uh, began to realize that I was becoming socially stunted because I only got to interact with one type of individual constantly. So I just wanted to break, break off and find myself. Yeah. I'm still searching. Hey, well, what is it like to, to go through that and realize those things? Because how old were you when that happened? Like 25, 26? No, no, I was uh, 19, 20. Oh, okay. Yeah, so so, much uh, yeah, much younger. So that's really early to be thinking about a lot of that stuff. Like the brain is still hella developing mm -hmm. at that stage. I think, I think what happened when I was third, so I remember at the age of 13, I was thinking about death a lot, okay? This may sound very dark, but I knew it was gonna end. So if our life is going to end, what are we gonna do with the time that we have. I always felt like I wanted to do something that was exciting and cool and adventurous and maybe a little different. And I, I wanted to make uh, an impact in the world. And at that time when I was a kid, I thought maybe I need to become a movie star. Maybe I need to become a multimillionaire. Maybe I need to, you know, I had all these dreams. And then I realized that all the people that I had uh, seen in my life that were close to me that had some success were in business. Uh, from my dad to his friends to uh, other family members. So I thought to myself, I need to start some kind of business. And I was attracted to clothing and I thought maybe I'll start a t-shirt company. Shout out Strike Movement. Exactly, shout out uh, United by Motion right there. Um, and I thought maybe that's how I do it. And I, I started my first t-shirt company at the age of 16 and I called it Nuped, which is enjoy in Swedish. That's cool. Uh, and it flopped. It, it, didn't, oh. <laughs> it didn't go anywhere. And then I started another one called KP, which is uh, my Swedish nickname, Kalle, and then my last name, Pauli. That didn't work either. But I still have the logo that I designed. Uh, I think it was like on Coral Draw or something like that. Something, you know, very, <laughs> very basic, but it, it, it turned out pretty sick. And then uh, I had another t shirt company called Born, which was Burn but uh, it kind of spelled like born again. Yeah. Uh, and uh, none of that worked. And then I thought, well, you know what? I'm really into wakeboarding and I really like this action sports scene. Maybe I'll, I'll try to build some wakeboards. And in Spain, there were no materials to build this. No one knew anything about it. Uh, so I built a wake skate. And all of a sudden I'm building this uh, wooden uh, skateboard that's gonna you know, uh, work on the water behind a boat. And it did work. And then I realized, wait a second, no one here has a boat. <laughs> <laughs> no, wow. no one knows what wakeboarding is. You have no market here. So that one flopped too. And I tried a bunch of these different uh, businesses until I came to the US and I had this attraction towards media and towards movies and film and I thought you know what maybe I should become an actor so I went into acting and I started auditioning for commercials and I do, did some athletic modeling and I, I just was trying to make it in that scene and that's where I figured out that producing content was the key and it was uh, this one night where I was watching an infomercial with uh, Tony Horton uh, P90X I don't know if you've ever heard of Beach Body. I, I do. I've yeah. heard of it. I was thinking, we have well, here. yeah, right. It's like, <laughs> well, that was just a thing in the U.S. that was on TV All from you know 12 a.m. until 4 a.m. And I thought to myself, if someone like this guy can do it, and people must be watching this, and he's selling some kind of product, I should be able to do this too. I just don't want to do it like that. That does not look anything like what I would do, but the way of doing it, the format, has to have some kind of value. 
And that's when I really started thinking about what does fitness look like beyond gymnastics, beyond a sport? Uh, how do we talk about it in a way that it becomes exciting, that it trans translates into a lifestyle? And uh, that led me to now saying, this is the business. We, we need to create some sort of media company. But it was just at that time, 2004, 2005, 2006, that the cameras on the phones were not good enough to produce the content. The platforms out there weren't supporting uh, content production. And thankfully, time, as it went on, uh, I developed as a coach, as a trainer. And then when CrossFit came in, it was so ripe and they were producing really organic, crappy content but that had great value in what they were saying. And that of course took off and that's when I said, this is what I'm latching onto. So I used everything that I had learned in my uh, production acting uh, attempts and then the business to launch Gymnastics Wad in 2010. And that was kind of the, the thing that uh, allowed me to go to the spot where I'm now, where I can kind of see a little bit further beyond just the technical aspects of what the fitness industry offers. Well, speaking of gymnastics, what one of my friends said to say thank you to you because you're the reason that he got a muscle up in like 2014. Wow, yeah. well, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. And you know what's so crazy is that I made all that shit up. Mm. Like I didn't really know what I was doing. I just had a a feeling that there are some techniques that I had learned growing up that if I share them with people and they try them in a safe way, I'm gonna get feedback from them that's gonna give me whether, give me information on whether this is true or not true. And somehow it was working. I had enough understanding that it could separate me from the rest of the pack and I could produce results. So that's really cool to hear that. And whoever your friend is, Shannon. say, <laughs> Shane? Shannon. Shannon? Yeah. Shannon, thank you. <laughs> You're awesome, and I hope to meet you one day. Yeah. Um, what excites you about movement? Because he was talking about, you know, trying to talk about movement in an exciting way, mm -hmm. trying to, to, you know, show people there is a better way uh, or a, a funner way to do things. And, mm -hmm. you know, my, my gym's all about fun. So, you know, I don't say I'm the best weightlifting gym in the world, but I'm the funnest weightlifting gym. Yeah. That is so cool. So, like, tell me what excites you about movement. Like you talked about doing the seminar and falling in love, mm -hmm. but like, why? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, I think, so at the seminar itself, it wasn't so much the movement, it was the message that they were saying. So Carl was asking like, what is your why and your purpose for training? And I was like, holy shit. Cause I was, at the time I was just doing CrossFit and I was doing it because I was a CrossFit coach. And I thought there was this expectation that I needed to be doing it. But fast forward now, I'm still a CrossFit coach, but I can bring them something completely different uh, because I see training way different now. So I move because it makes me feel good. And doing the training, I can unlock shit that I didn't even know that I could do. And that's what excites me. It's like I'm constantly being pushed to another level. And it's not so much, I mean, yeah, it's fucking awesome when I can do this really cool trick, and then I can teach others how to do that, but it's not about the trick. It's about actually being like, holy shit, I can actually do this. And that's the coolest thing, is like going beyond what you expect that you can do. Like removing any limitations of these perceived expectations that you put on yourself and just giving it a go and exploring it. And that's fucking awesome. Like it's really empowering. Yeah, I actually have uh, something that I would like for you to share. Can you share the experience that we had over by the Opera House as you did the oh, hands? Yeah, shit. can you share that whole experience, like everything that was kind of going through your mind as that happened? Maybe, maybe give him some context and, and share what that was like. Okay, so Andy, this is the context. So we're just walking around and exploring Sydney, and then Carl's like, "All right, how about we go over to the Opera House?" And I was like, "Yeah, cool." So we walk over to the Opera House. Have you been around the Opera House? Yeah. Have you seen the shitload of stairs yep. that go up towards the upper house? Did you go up or down? Oh, so we went up and, well, Carl stayed at the bottom and then he's like, I want you to walk to the top and we'll take some photos. I was like, oh, cool. And I'd been dabbing all day. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to be doing a dab. So I was he's like, okay, keep going, keep going. 
no shit, he got me to go all the way to the top of the stairs and he's like, okay, now I want you to do a handstand. And like really close to the ledge of all the stairs going down. And I'm like, holy shit, like I could probably hold a handstand like maybe for approximately a second, <laughs> uh, let alone in front of all these fucking people and heading down towards like a shitload of stairs. Yeah, so there's like 70 stairs there and... They're not like <laughs> close together, it's high, and there's like a billion people taking photos. Yeah, constantly. yeah, it's pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, and then what yeah. happened? <laughs> I fucking did the handstand. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I got this awesome photo out of it, but and which was fucking awesome as well. Mm. But what I'm kind of getting at is like, you just had to like give me that nudge and he believed that I could do it and I feel like that's so empowering because I say that to my athletes too like I wouldn't ask you to do something if I didn't think you could do it so the fact that Carl was like yeah just do it and I was like okay I'm gonna fucking do it and mm -hmm. I did it and like I blocked out everyone that I would have been consciously thinking of like oh my god all these people are watching me try to do this handstand um yeah and I did it he gave me some coaching and yeah it was it was fucking awesome yeah, which is exciting because I feel like if if you can do it in the form of a handstand on the ledge of these stairs at the Opera House in Sydney when everyone's watching you, you can possibly do that elsewhere in your life. So it's kind of how you do one thing is how you do everything. Yeah. And what we're trying to teach through freestyle by using movement is teaching you some very basic mental, emotional tools that you can use to perform at the highest level. And it's as simple as that. Yeah. And that's just one example of it that turns out to be a cool picture but also translates into now you have fully leveled up in every aspect of your life yeah. the confidence yeah just afterwards your confidence my level just went mm -hmm. and now you know what your capabilities are but it takes time to build those capabilities and it takes trust to trust carl to do that so that relationship is obviously very strong and a coach athlete relationship is one of the most intimate things there is right yeah. Can you talk to me about like how you foster that? You yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. The, the, way, the way I see it is pretty simple, is that everyone wants to have clarity to some degree. And because finding clarity is a lifetime process, instead of focusing on the clarity itself, what we focus on is the process. So I can tell you, hey, I have enough knowledge to show you steps one, two, three, A, B, C to get from point A to point B or closer to where you want to go. That's why you maybe were seeking me out or you found me. And then once you give people a process, what happens is that they can focus on that process and within that start to trend towards mastery, a place that you will never arrive at, but you will feel yourself getting closer. And then on top of that, is instilling um, an environment that's conducive for people to have autonomy, meaning freedom to make their own choices, and all based on the natural consequences that come from your choices. And me simply being someone who holds the space in a way that allows people to move in whatever way they believe they need to move right now so they can get what they want, and then having that environment give them feedback, natural consequences, you want to do a handstand uh, against the, you know, <laughs> the opera house or on the ledge of those stairs and you can't hold a handstand, we don't capture the picture, you fall down the stairs, those natural consequences are giving you feedback to make some change. You still probably get a cool picture, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 you don't. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 as you go it, down. It'll be like a, a handstand <laughs> dab. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and my job is simply to, to uh, have a relationship that's built on trust where it's not my judgment, but my discernment that allows you to see what is quote unquote right or wrong or the best decision that you can make. And that's nothing uh, that happens really overnight. It takes a long time and it's a long process and a long journey. So you just have to show up every day, be willing to have hard conversations, ask questions like, what are you excited about? What are you not so excited about? Is there anything that's worrying you? How can we create a place that's safe enough for you to be your most vulnerable self without the fear of, am I gonna lose my job? Am I not gonna make it if I cry right now or if I say something stupid? You know, you, <laughs> this is a safe place. 
and it's a safe place because you have chosen to participate and so have I. And where I tell everyone that the pressure is off my back is that anyone who comes to join my seminars or reads my book or anything that I put out, they have chosen to be there and so have I. So all I have to do is bring everything that I've got and to be as open as I can to uh, take criticism or feedback or positive reinforcement and to use that to just keep, keep growing. So really what we're doing is curating a culture that feels safe so you can be vulnerable and uh, pursue who you believe you need to be so you can go where you want to go. Your, your business really started off in movement mm -hmm. and it's definitely transcending to you know, like this whole lifestyle design thing. And I see, I see the natural progression in terms of just like thought process, training, and what it does to the person. How do you, uh, like how did that happen for you? And then also, how do you move people that just, you know, come in to, to training just for the movement? And how do you get them to see that this actually has long lasting effects on the rest of their life? Yeah, once again, that comes down to the culture. You, you want people that are willing to uh, learn a couple things. One, learn how to reframe what's currently happening. A lot of times, uh, shit hits the fan, and we're like, oh man, everything is going to crash, and it's the end of the world. Can you reframe that to something of value, something that's going to give you uh, an ability to make a better decision? Can you give me an example? Yeah, so uh, let's say yesterday I woke up, and uh, I, in the beginning of the month, of course, we're doing payroll, finances. I go into our business accounts and I see that every single account is overdrawn by thousands and thousands of dollars. So I start to freak out immediately. I'm like, what's happening here? Our, our business accounts are overdrawn. We have no cash. And I start going through and I realize, oh, we have fraud and now I have to uh, fix this. So of course I call the bank, we start working on these, these, uh, these claims, and throughout the three hours that I was working on this, uh, these fraudulent transactions that happened uh, that were not allowing us to do payroll and all of a sudden uh, freaking us out as we're launching this new program. I'm in Sydney, I'm not in San Francisco, I can't go straight to the bank there. Things start to get a little complicated and I could feel my chest tightening up and me starting to sweat and get warm. I can even feel it right now. So what I was thinking was, wait a second, everything has a solution. All I need to do is go through the process of, first of all, saying this was fraud, getting the claims in, and then waiting the three to five business days that it takes. I know the insurance that I have. I know how I work with this bank. Something similar has happened in the past. I can solve this. It may just take a little bit longer. And the good news is that if we think about every dip as an opportunity to slingshot ourselves up higher, I felt like, okay, this deeper dip is just gonna shoot me even higher uh, in a few days from now. So no stress, I just reframed that. And I think if we can create a culture that allows for that, whether I'm teaching movement or helping you make better choices, now you're starting to tell yourself a completely different story. And when you tell yourself a different story, you are upgrading your personal operating system. So reframing is of the essence. Then the other thing is that uh, you need to unleash, meaning you just need to let go and be imperfect. Don't expect to execute at the highest <laughs> level. Expect it to be a fuck up. Like that's, the, that's the only expectation you should have. And when that happens, instead of being dissatisfied with the result, use that result to evaluate what you need to do next without beating yourself up and thinking about how would you evaluate that dissatisfaction with the utmost compassion. And that becomes the practice. And now whether you're learning how to do a push-up or a handstand or lift some weight or training for uh, a sport, now you can see how your mental practice, your emotional practice within the physical practice will transcend into everything else. And that's why that takes time and it's just a matter of having people flip the script when they're learning something and 
put it on them. And the way that we do that is simply by reflecting. That's it. Hey, Carl, I want to learn how to do a push-up. Oh, you want to learn how to do a push-up? Yeah, I want to learn how to do a push-up because, and all of a sudden they, st they are the ones, the clients, the athletes are the ones that are actually telling me what they need to do rather than me telling them what they have to do. All I have to do is be the biggest mirror they've ever seen in front of them. And that's it. And that's as simple as that. And just to take it a little further, uh, when it comes to movement, if you think about movement as something that's beyond physical, that is also emotional and mental, it will translate into any environment, anything that's physical, from this mic that we're holding to the camera that's over there, to uh, the mug that you use, a pen that you use, everything that we hold on to is a, uh, an extension of our bodies. And there are tools that we have developed so we can further enhance our abilities to move through this world. The question is how do you intend, how do you want to move through this world? And that's how you really start uh, instilling this understanding of what is the greater purpose of a specific practice. I always told my athletes, because weightlifting is one, repetitive, so they're doing the same thing over and over again. And if you do that, there's not a lot of exploration. Um, but they can be um, and I tell them all the time we're not looking for perfection we're looking for progression right? as long as you see yourself as progressing we're on the right path and that progression can look uh, you know a, a million different ways it could be a kilo on the bar it could be hey you're keeping that bar a little bit closer to you now you know you're getting a little bit lower you're pulling the bar a little bit higher and so on and so on and then the the thing that I've been really playing with recently is just an intentful practice, right? You need to move with intention, and that's something that you're sort of alluding to, in that whatever you do has to have some sort of intent, but then to add to that, there has to be a process of reflection afterwards. Mm -hmm. So, you know, after you do, did you do it well? What can you work on? And you need to focus on both of those things, right? You need to focus on the positives and the things that you can work more on. Right, I'm with you, 100%. And I think it's easy to say you have to have a practice of intention, but it's very hard to do. Because everyone that is walking this planet, to some degree, gets caught in the outcome. So if you say, my goal or my intent is to add another kilo to the bar, now they're immediately focusing on, I need to put more weight on. Does that mean that I have to change the rep scheme? Do we need to change the percentages on this? Do I need to do two sessions a day? Should I do more accessory work? Do you think I should sign up for this comp or should I wait a little bit long? What should I do? So all of a sudden they start making decisions according to the outcome, which is great because we need a plan. But when we start planning around outcome only, all of a sudden the process starts to narrow and we need room to explore. And that's where it gets challenging. And then I think where we can help people set a better standard for how they're going to go through the process is by asking themselves some simple questions, such as, for what? So you want to put another kilo on the barbell? For what? So I can make it to the, to the competition. Cool, for what? Well, so I can prove to myself that I'm, I'm uh, worthy of being on a platform or on a stage like that. Cool, for what? Well, because when I was a child, my dad left and all of a sudden I lost my confidence and that started translating into all my relationships. The day that I go and stand on that platform, I'll be proving to myself that that relationship that I had with my father that set me off course was actually just a story I was telling myself and that I'm actually strong enough to be able to navigate not just the lifting but also my life in this capacity. And that is where we need to go. We need to get to the root of people's values and people's intentions. And I think that's where 90% of the work really happens. And I'm trying to use every uh, business initiative that I have to instill people with the tools to ask themselves those questions. And they're tough questions to ask. Very tough. And most people don't want to listen to them. But eventually... <laughs> You can wear them down. <laughs> they, they come around. Do Everyone enough comes push-ups. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They come around. So what do we have to do? We have to create environments that are exciting enough for people to come close. We need to create uh, products and services that are exciting enough for people to want to wanna participate in them. And within them, 
in a very subtle way, start instilling these values and these tools. And then slowly, without them even noticing, over time, they have made such a big shift that uh, their lives are transformed. And that's pretty cool. It's so cool. And I think if you, if you have an athlete that's been with you for long enough, and you reflect yourself, you can see that growth and change. And, you know, I mean, obviously, there are some times where, you know, like you, you went to the seminar, you left a different person. But other times it does take a bit longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's fine too. Yeah. Um, because, you know, there are layers you gotta peel away, just like you said, you know, like, right. why, 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 why? Yeah. And why is hard for people to answer. But for what is a little bit easier, it becomes a little bit more objective, a little bit more black and white. So I think having a more objective approach for tapping into intent and value is better than something that's subjective. Why becomes so big? Yeah, okay. And it's kind of like the meaning of life. Oh, what is this? This is so strange. Well, that's why we have physicists and mathematicians and people around the world uh, trying to help people understand those answers. But for the individual, I think it's important that we go into something that is a little bit more uh, practical and actionable, which could be a, for what? Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, I think that's as simple as it gets. Yeah, the, 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 the approach is simple. <laughs> the practice is hard <laughs> and complex. <laughs> well, what, can you give people at home, uh, let's say they're weightlifters, weightlifting coaches, mm -hmm. um, some actionable steps? Yeah, I think the first thing is to identify what is it that you're struggling with. Like right now, what is it that you're struggling with? And then behind that struggle, what are you feeling? Is it anger? Is it frustration? Can you describe what you're feeling? And once you start describing what you're feeling, can you identify the thoughts that you're having, the stories, the conversations that are coming up? And then behind those thoughts, can you identify what belief systems have you integrated in your life that have gotten you there? And then from there, reverse engineer it back to from your belief to what you're thinking, to what you're feeling, to what you're struggling with. And then that becomes the reframe. And I think if we can have a process of reflection that looks like that, that we can actually put on a board and people can see as a progression all of a sudden now when they're sitting there on the bench, they're about to go for their lift that they know there's a 50-50 chance of me hitting this thing. What kind of story am I telling myself in my head? Am I nervous? Why is my heart rate accelerating? Am I nervous or am I, am I excited? Oh wait, what, what is the feeling? Okay, this is the feeling. What are the thoughts? Oh yeah, these are the thoughts. Oh shit, this brings me back to when I was a kid. Or this brings me back to my last meet when I went to do my opener and I missed the opener. And then I went for the second lift, I missed that one too. And then all of a sudden I was at my third snatch and I was just not feeling confident. So if we can help people in practice to uh, be able to pull all the way back to what's their belief system and then reframe through their belief system back to where they're currently at, what feels like nerves becomes excitement. What's getting in your way and making things fuzzy become clarity. And now you can approach the bar and you can hit it and make sure that you uh, do the best you can with the best mindset regardless of the outcome. You may still miss the lift, <laughs> but your approach feels fucking great. Yeah. And that's cool. And the, the, the not the outcome, but the, the, the disastrous feelings that come with a missed lift mm -hmm. can be changed. Yes. And that's the most important thing, right? Yes. Who cares if you miss if it doesn't bother you? <laughs> mm -hmm. And sometimes you're not going to know why exactly you missed. Yeah. Your nervous system could be a little fried. It could be that you're on a new platform today and that platform without you knowing it is just a millimeter tilted in a different direction. And that millimeter with the weight, with the load, with your bar, bar path, with your pattern is taking you off just enough to hit you in a place where you're not strong enough. Maybe we do need to do more accessory work and do imperfect lifts. So when we're on new platforms, regardless of <laughs> where we go, we can actually have some buffer, some room. As specific as weightlifting is and how specific it is to have the perfect weight on the bar, the perfect uh, uh, plates, the, everything calibrated and balanced, there's always gonna be deviation. Can you get ready for that? 
Yeah, you just got to practice in perfection. Yeah. Which and is cool, too. It's I mean, great. You don't want to be lifting on Yusaka all the time if, you know, you're going to have, you know, some crappy other bar in a competition in your warm-up room. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes, uh, in a local meet, your warm-up bar is going to be like, you know, pen leg, again, faster, something. Yep. That is different. Not necessarily bad. But different in feel to yeah the knurling is gonna mm. feel different the spin of the bar is gonna feel different the place is gonna different it's gonna even sound a little bit different when when you hit the lip could be colder could it be could be colder it could be warmer <laughs> could be flooded yeah it could be <laughs> it could be it could be anything so are, are you willing to be ready for that and th- and I think this is where to your point intensity in our training is of the essence but it's not intensity as in like let's go hard it's intention yeah so. You need to have intent in your practice, and and that's that's all it is. And everyone's going to be at a different level. And how do we meet them where they are? Relationships. Done. I'm going <laughs> to ask you like a personal question because you've obviously had to to backtrack and ask yourself some of these questions. Can you talk about a time where this has happened, and uh, maybe a time early on, and then a time like more recently? Where you've had to really dig deep and say, "Oh, you know, this is why I act the way I do," and maybe I change it, or maybe I'm fine with that. Maybe I can reconcile that. So, do you mean in regards to? In terms of movement, in terms of life, in terms of anything, what what just sticks out to you? So the first thing that comes to mind uh, was when I was talking about the coaching. Uh, so when I was pursuing, um, I left my assistant manager role at a different gym to go straight into CrossFit coaching so I could do more of that. And it wasn't until after the seminar that when I thought about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it for, that then I had this little like switch and it was kind of like, you know what, like this is not the direction that I want to go. I still want to be doing coaching, but my love and passion for specifically CrossFit was no longer there. And so that's kind of when I was searching as to, okay, I see Carl, I see Freestyle Connection, I see Daniel, and I see the message that they're putting out there. And I was like, I want a bit of that. Like, that's what I want. And I wasn't feeling that what I was currently doing. So that's why I thought, okay, I need to make a change. And then now if you uh, flip back to an hour ago, we're in team meeting in the hotel. And I said to Carl, we could spend hours here in team meeting. I'm so fucking G'd up. Like what we're doing, a part of freestyle, that excites me. So it wasn't specifically bagging on the sport of CrossFit or the coaching itself. It's just what we're doing is what fires me up. So I want to keep doing more of that. And that makes me feel like I'm on the right path. Mm-hmm. So, so would you say that it was, you saw some, a, a different way of doing things that were more aligned with what you believed in or your values? What, what were those things specifically that you saw? Because you messaged me right after that <laughs> seminar, and I, was like, and I was dismissive. I was like, what? <laughs> like that. But you continued and continued and continued, and now uh, you're working with me, and <laughs> here we are in Sydney, and uh, you're, you're doing it. What do you think it was that you saw that was different? Uh, I felt like... Well, you connected to me through a movement uh, practice first when you were saying that we move by feel and that we should do things by feel. So I took that from a movement perspective and I've put it into everyday life with every decision that I make. So do I feel good? Yes, no. Move towards what feels good and move away from what doesn't feel good. That's it in a nutshell. Like I do that from a movement perspective. I do that from making a decision. Uh, I got offered a role to coach at another gym. Did it feel good? I wasn't in a line with that gym. Uh, it didn't make me feel the way I feel about freestyle. So easy decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and has that translated to uh, your life outside of the gym and of training? What do you mean? Yeah, so the way that you made decisions, like it was so clear for you. Okay, I like this gym, yeah. but I don't feel the same way as I feel about freestyle, so yeah. now I can, I can move over. Has that, are there any other aspects of your life where, you, where you've seen now, oh, this is the same experience I've had, and now I'm choosing to act different, behave different, see the world different? Yeah, totally. It, it totally flips your perspective on everything. Uh, like, uh, you, you had your example um, when you found out with the bank account, you know, 
that kind of thing. I can apply that in everyday life. Like if something happens, I have the ability to always see a positive intention out of whatever that might happen or come my way. I can kind of flip the way that I see it. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like everything happens for a reason. I mean, I was tripping out before when you were talking about the marine biology and you're like, oh, you're stuck here with me. I'm like, no, that's fucking universe, like putting us all together. Like this is supposed to happen. That's like cool. we were meant to be here. That's cool. That is, you know, and now that's you're the on a way podcast. that I see it. Yeah, like what the hell? Like we were all meant to be here. We're all meant to connect. That's cool. And I think like the relationships that we, that we build and connect with things like this is fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. I agree. I love it. There are some things that scare me. And a big one of those is something that you alluded to in terms of like just movement and, and f how things feel mm -hmm. is that we're more and more out of align with feeling, touching, moving. Mm -hmm. um, we stray away from proper human connection. And then we also stray away from just doing things like moving like we're so you know sedentary in terms of like being stuck behind computer screens um like i mean i noticed like i got when i got here i just sat on my phone i was like oh, i probably shouldn't just sit on my phone right? like, <laughs> i'll go you know walk around or something while i was waiting for you guys <laughs> yeah 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 um, and you know like it, it it scares me when i like i see new people come into the gym and they it's not that they have no idea how to move it's like they've lost it and they, they don't understand what they've lost and it doesn't hurt them as much as it hurts me to see mm. what they could be doing in terms of like being able to express themselves through their movement. Yeah, and I would say that that hurt that you're probably experiencing, if we were to use this concept of reframing, it's a simple deep care. So what's the opportunity there? Oh, to fix well, it. Exactly. <laughs> and it's, it's not even to fix it, it's to create an environment where they can fix it. Yes. And that's it. And that's exciting. So if this is the reality, what are you going to do about it? Oh, that's well, why I have a gym. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, but uh, so, so the reason I brought it up yeah. was uh, I just wanted to know if, if, if you ever feel that way. If no. you see that or... No. Okay. I, this is what I tell everyone. I tell everyone, I don't care about your problems have enough of my own. I'm not scared about your problems. I don't worry about your problems. I have enough of my own. But what I do care about deeply is what you intend to do with your problems. And that's where I come in. Yeah. I'm here to help you with that. So no, I'm never scared of that. It's not my problem. And I think that's something that I got to reframe 100% because I do care a lot about that and I probably carry around a lot of baggage that I don't need to mm -hmm. every day. So the question here would be, how can you begin to let go of that baggage? Well, I've got to reframe now. I've got to think back. Yeah. I've got to walk it back, see where it comes from. And that's exactly where now, this is something you're struggling with, you're carrying this weight. Mm. How's it making you feel? It's making me feel heavy, sluggish, worried, sad, whatever maybe you define that. Okay, where are the thoughts behind it? Well, I'm seeing this world trending in a way that I am not excited about. I don't think our future deserves this. In fact, we're wired for movement. We're wired to be greater. We can do this. What are the belief systems that I have? I believe that we should all move freely. We should all feel strong. We should all be capable of living long so we can be with our families, so we can make a positive impact in the world, so we can live on this planet that we're borrowing and leave it better than we found it. That's my belief system. All of a sudden you go back to the reframe and you're like, oh yeah, whatever you're doing, I can now draw a line and say, that's your problem. But I'm here, I'm here to help. How can I serve you today to help you relieve the load that you're carrying? That may feel like back pain, knee pain. You're not playing with your kids. You're winded when you go on a hike. Now all of a sudden we have freedom. And I think that's the reframing. And that's why this kind of structure that I laid out can be helpful. I did not think that I was going to have to go through this today. <laughs> <laughs> that was but, awesome. But it is cool because that is how I feel. Yeah. And, um, you know, like, I find that it's the weirdest thing, like, doing this podcast is, like, some of the best experiences of the podcast are when I get stuck and when I get, you know, 
uh, when I when I change, and this is one of those moments, and I'm just very aware of it right now. That's cool. Um, That's really so cool. yeah, what's coming? This is a great example, and I think this is so good. What's coming up for you as we're having this conversation right now? Uh, a whole bunch of things. I mean, my um, so my partner is actually. In, on the other side, in, in the other side of the world, she lives in Vancouver at the moment. We've been together for ten years. Wow! wow. Uh, but she moved away for a really good opportunity, and so I've got this gym, which I love. I absolutely love it, and I'm faced with a lot of choices on, you know, how I'm going to progress in my life. Like, I do this thing that I really love. I love having this impact on people, and. Sometimes I probably shouldn't be talking about this on the podcast because it definitely affects business. Uh, I, I have this gym I really love, and I, I love what I'm doing, and I want to help people to move and be better and be stronger. But at the same time, I've been pulled in another direction in that I also want to be with Kutch, mm-hmm. and which is my partner. Yeah. And, you know, I want to be there for her. I want to go on adventures with her. And I... Yeah, I'm just I'm just feeling the pull of both directions, yeah. and I, I and I feel heavy because of the weight I feel from the people that I have here, and the weight I feel from obviously her as well. So here's something that I would be curious to know. So if your gym is listening right now, show a hand or DM you Andy right now, and let us know if you're willing to support Andy on pursuing one helping everyone grow physically and two be able to enjoy adventures with your partner who lives in Vancouver far away which is your better half and your life partner yeah I have a feeling the majority of people in the space that you created wants to see you win they do they 100% yeah yeah Yeah. so uh, just to point out as well like one of the first things that they did because they they know like I so like um, my gym is basically just me. Like the weightlifting gym is very intimate. Like the, you mm-hmm. coach all of the athletes kind of thing. Right. We have coaches as well, but not that many. Mm-hmm. And um, they came to me and they were like, hey, like we know, you know, it's hard to leave, but if you need to leave for a bit, like we'll take over. You know, we'll, we'll come together. Amazing. And do that. So like I know how they feel, mm-hmm. but it's how I feel. Right. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, that's where now reframing your belief system of maybe thinking that you have to be at the gym all the time for the gym to succeed and your members to get what they need. Maybe it can be reframed that, hey, 20% of my time I will be spending in Vancouver. And while I'm in Vancouver, I have a strategy in place that allows for the gym to continue to function, for me to continue to stay in touch with them, and seeing that 20% as self care which is something that you need. You know how important recovery is. And I think this is the conversation that we have to have more of because otherwise you trap yourself in your own projects. And you're locking yourself out from the progress that you wanna make. And now you think you're helping others, but in reality, you're not because you are not nurturing yourself and therefore limiting your ability to contribute to the greater good or to your gym or whatever it is that you care about. And I think that's where the reframing has to come come into place. And there needs to just be very clear um, communication happening with your audience, with your members, and for you to see whether what you're telling yourself is really true or not. That's some deep shit. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> and I think that's how it is. And to yeah. be able to go and be fully present with your partner and enjoy that because that's the thing that you've chosen to do. And that's pretty fucking cool if you ask me. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's probably a cool place to leave off. There you go. <laughs> uh, Carl, tell me what you've got going on and where people can find you. Ooh, we have a lot going on right now. <laughs> so uh, you can find me on freestyleconnection.com. Actually, today is a special day. We, we just launched our Muscle Up Master program, which is a program dedicated to helping people get over the rings, get over a bar. But it's so much more than that. It's really uh, using the Muscle Up as a proxy to help people move with intention and to create infinite progressions. So for example, if they're into weightlifting, they can use this program as an accessory piece to get in there and to have some freedom. It can be like their adventure. 
But if you also want to get a muscle up, because that's the thing you want to do, you can get one if you want to get more efficient. Who doesn't want to get yeah, one? Yeah, exactly. It's like the million dollar question. Who doesn't want one? So we're excited about that. The other thing I'm excited about is uh, this past weekend, we just completed the first, no, the second Insider, but the first one here in Sydney, which was, was yeah, amazing. I've only got glowing reviews so far. That's amazing. Well, that's that's crazy. It's a, it's a weekend dedicated to communication, brand development, and business development, where we, what we talk about is building relationships, and then how are we expressing it at the highest level. I'm also excited. We have the new collection of Strike Movement just coming out, the, the Transits. Uh, just dropped a couple of days ago and they look amazing and I just saw some of the new samples of what we're working on So that's super exciting. You can find us on uh, strike-movementwithnovowels.com uh, If you just look straight strike, strike movement up on Google, you'll find it um, And then uh, I have my podcast the freestyle way, which is really exciting every Monday. It is awesome as well. Thank you uh, I think you should start with the Jason Khalifa episode there you go, Jason <laughs> Khalifa. What, which one would you say they should start? start uh, Diane Fu, Jason Khalifa, which one would you start with? Wavezilla. Wavezilla, all right. <laughs> so everyone has, has their favorite. Someone asked me the other day, what, what's your favorite episode? And I said, I, I don't have a favorite. I feel like it's the body of work that's there that I'm excited about. And that's, that's really cool. And then uh, this coming weekend, this weekend actually, so Saturday, you're going to be at the, at the seminar. Yeah, yeah. I'm pumped. I'm oh, super excited. Yeah. That's my last. This is the last full movement seminar I'm doing. Oh, really? Yeah. And we have a small group, so I'm like, come on, guys, let's get on this thing. I want to I wanna go out with a bang. Uh, and then on Sunday, I have the Muscle Up Master Class, which is something I'm teaching all around the world, and it's a catalyst to start these conversations. Uh, I'm just using the Muscle Up as a, a good excuse and proxy to uh, begin this conversation that we just had. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, uh, any sort of discipline is a great way to build a foundation on and i think you've talked about that before as well right so yeah amazing and where can people find you and what you're doing <laughs> yeah where can they find, where you? Can they find me they can find me uh, at freestyle connection yeah on instagram and they can find me at coach underscore lydia underscore mm -hmm. yes that's you just double check in with carl yeah <laughs> <laughs> on instagram <laughs> I'm, I'm her manager now <laughs> yeah we recently changed my handle, so uh, yeah, so that people can find me. Yeah, and easier. then uh, yeah, she she's in the freestyle training group, which uh, she she's leading as the team captain there, and it's uh, been awesome. It's fire. Awesome. Yeah, and guys, you can find <laughs> me at Train with Andy on Instagram, and you can find the gym at Raw Barbell Club on all of our social media. So that's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Twitter, Snapchat, and all that. <laughs> uh, make sure to check out, check us out, especially our Instagram, our Instagram stories. You can see how the team is training, what PRs they're making, what they get up to, clowning around and stuff. And it's a whole lot of fun, guys. So thank you so much for being here, Carl. Thank you, and Lydia. Thank yeah, you so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming out and making it happen. That was so cool. Oh, it was so cool. All right, guys. I'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>